In this video, I'm going to talk you through understanding value-added analysis. I'll begin by going through how predictions are generated and then look at how we calculate value-added and how to interpret value-added data. The concept of value-added rests on the fact that all students make progress throughout their schooling. However, as we all know, some students make more progress than others. Value-added is a measure of whether an individual or a class or even a whole school has made more or less progress than average. So let's think about what that means. First of all, how do we generate predictions in the first place? Suppose we have a baseline of some sort from which we wish to make predictions. That could be a score from a baseline assessment or could be a score derived from previous examinations taken by the students. So, for example, average GCSE attained could be used as a baseline, as it's a good predictor of attainment at A-level two years later. And let's suppose we have a final exam with grades A to F. Let's plot baseline score against final grade. We will get something like this. Here, we have around 500 results. Each cross represents an individual student for whom we have both a baseline score and a final examination grade. From these data, we can generate a line of best fit, which is what we call a trend line or regression line. For those of you interested in going deeper into the statistics underlying this, this is done using a standard least squares analysis. The nature of that trend line is such that we know that 50% of the points are on or above the line and 50% on or below it. This trend line is described as an expected level of progress. This doesn't mean we expect every student to be on that line. In fact, we know that most won't. But it gives us an average level of progress which we can use to make predictions from baseline scores. So, let's strip that back to just the trend line and our axes. What do we do with it? Let's suppose we have an individual student for whom we have a baseline score, say here. Then we can read off which point on the trend line corresponds to that score and that gives us a predicted grade. In this case, between a B and a C. OK, so that's our prediction. Let's have a look now at what happens at the other end, when we have the actual exam results. Suppose we have a trend line, generated using a very large data set, say a nationally representative sample of several thousand students. What happens if we plot the baseline score against final exam grade for a particular class in a particular school? How do these data compare with our nationally representative trend line? As we would expect, some are above the line, meaning those students made better than average progress, and some are below, indicating that progress was lower than average. These are what we would describe as positive or negative value added. Now, let's pick out a couple of individuals. Look at this student here. If we trace down to our horizontal axis, we can see where their baseline score would be, and that in turn gives us their predicted grade, which in this case is just above an F or between an E and an F. This student has achieved a grade C for this exam, so has done exceptionally well. We would call this positive value added. Now, let's look at this student. Again, we can drop down to the horizontal axis to see their baseline score, and tracing up to the line and then across gives us their predicted grade, which in this case is between a C and a D. This student has obtained an F grade, which we would describe as negative value added. Now let's look at how we measure value added. One obvious thing to do is to measure how far a student's result is from the trend line. This distance is what we call a residual. The simplest type is what we would call a raw residual, which is simply the distance above or below the trend line. In other words, the difference between the predicted grade for a particular student and the grade they obtain in their final examination. If the point is below the line, we take the residual to be negative. 
If you have a large sample, you should find that the raw residuals for each exam are normally distributed with a mean of zero. What does that mean? Well, it means that if we collate all our raw residual data and plot residual on a graph against frequency, we get something that looks like this. This classic bell-shaped curve is very useful because it is well behaved and well understood statistically. Let's look at an example to make this a bit clearer. Here are some raw residual data from 10,000 students who set a baseline assessment at the beginning of year 10 and did GCSE at the end of year 12. If we plot a bar chart of residual against the number of students who got that residual, the frequency, we get this. These data have an average value of zero, and that really is the average in every sense of the word. For those of you familiar with the statistical term, is the mean, median, and mode of this distribution. Now, the disadvantage with raw residuals is that the spread of the data may vary significantly year to year, or exam to exam. In this case, our values go from minus 2.2 to 2.2. This is why we standardise. It makes residuals comparable across different subjects or different years. To do so, we first have to calculate the standard deviation of these data as a measure of the spread. In this case, we have a standard deviation of 0.68. And then we divide our raw residuals by the standard deviation. Here are the same data plotted using standardised residuals. Notice the change in scale along the horizontal axis. It now runs from minus 3.24 to 3.24. This is now really powerful because we know exactly what a particular residual means. Let's have a look at that. Here is a graph of standardised residuals, with a percentage of the population marked in the various bands. What this says is... 38% of students lie between minus 0.5 and 0.5. 68% are actually between minus 1 and 1. Anyone in that band we would consider average. When we get outside that band, we're in the region where things are statistically significantly above average or below average. So anything over 1 is significantly above average, everything below minus 1 is significantly below and that's meaningful statistically and that's very important. There's another way of looking at the same data. This graph shows the relationship between the standardized residuals and the percentage of students who obtained lower value added, what is termed a percentile. We can read percentiles off this graph for any given standardized residual. So for example, a standardized residual of 0.7 gives us a percentile of 76, meaning that 76% of students obtained a lower level of value added. Similarly, a standardized residual of minus 1.1 gives us a percentile of 14. That means 14% 14 of students obtained a lower level of value added. It's also worth noting that at a class, school or college level, i.e. when you want to get an overall picture of value added, we sometimes use the average standardised residual for a cohort. The average standardised residual for a cohort does of course behave in just the same way as the standardised residual for an individual. Thus we can tell at a glance how the progress of our cohort compares with, for example, a much larger sample such as a nationally representative sample. A standardised residual between minus 1 and 1 indicates a level of progress that is not significantly above or below expected progress. That's our 68% in the middle. Once we get above 1, we have significant positive value added. And that's significant in rigorous statistical terms. Similarly, a standardised residual below minus 1 indicates significant negative value added. In summary, value added is calculated by comparing the progress an individual or a cohort has made with an expected level obtained from a large sample. Residuals are used to quantify how much more or less progress than expected has been made, 
and these are often standardised so that comparisons can be made between different years and different subjects. Average standardised residuals can be used as a measure of value added for groups or for whole cohorts of students.